they have patient assistance programs that come in and pay for the cost. They will give you the medicine for free. I know exactly what to do and where to go and who to talk to, but it's so exhausting. It's just like, that's just too much. You're saying go to the HIV clinic. Well, that's one of the biggest obstacles in the first mm -hmm. place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When you love who you are and stay true to yourself, you inspire others to do the same. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you, or visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk, where we get right into it, no holds barred. We're about keeping it real. There's no shame, there's no stigma. We're about living life to the fullest. We're turning positive into a plus. So let's get into it. Today we are talking about HIV and the cost of staying alive. So I want to say welcome to my guests, Dr. Anu Sashadri or Dr. Anu, welcome back. Good to have you here. Thomas Davis is the founder of the Catharsis Project here in Los Angeles and Chris Villalobos. I knew I was going to screw it it's up. Okay. Did okay. I get it? Was it? No. No, well, even That's close. by Villalobos. Villa, yeah, there, yeah. what he said. Um, <laughs> sorry, Chris. Okay. Co-founder though of Adaptive Resources doing amazing things. Guys, thank you all so much for being here. Um, HIV drugs. They're so expensive. Is this off-putting? Well, it can be, for sure. But uh, with the programs that are available, it really doesn't have to be such a scare. Right, but yep. people don't know about the programs. Dr. Anu, um, you've got a 22-year-old guy. Comes in, gets his HIV test, diagnosed positive. That's one thing to tell him. But then what do you tell them as far as how they get care? Well, it depends on their insurance, uh, first of all, right? Uh, yeah. And then their background as well, as far as finances. Um, and the office resources that actually the physician has, too, I think is very important. Do we have a social worker on file? Do we have um, connections to other clinics or even HIV specialty clinics um, and go from there? Thomas, we know that HIV rates are uh, climbing in the black-brown trans communities. Mm -hmm. So back to that first question that I asked, uh, is the cost of HIV drugs, is it off-putting? Is it stopping people? Is that one of the reasons people don't get tested, go in and for all of that? I mean, honestly, I, I, from my experience, I think there are so many other things that come before you even are getting the meds and when you're figuring out like the insurance and stuff, there's the whole point of like, how are you even going in to see the doctor in the first place after you get that reactive test? You know, did you stay? Did you find a physician that you feel like you can actually talk to and be open about? You know, are you in a place where you emotionally, mentally can, you know, handle that? Um, so I think, all of that on top of the cost is uh, is all uh, com contributing factors. Yeah, we're saying the cost of staying alive, and mm -hmm. it really is mm -hmm. a matter of staying alive. We know these pills save lives, but we also know in this country, in the United States, access to those pills is really difficult. Why is it so hard? You're a doctor, you work in this business. Why is it so hard? I, to be honest with you, I really don't understand it myself. Um, and going back, I don't think a lot of patients even realize the cost of medications until mm -hmm. they have to buy the pills, right? And oh I have seen so many patients that have gone to the pharmacy at that point, and been, even when it comes to antibiotics or things that aren't coming, it's not covered by my insurance and I can't afford $250. Yeah. Yeah. I had it today. So it's crazy. I had to pick up my HIV meds today and I called them and they said, yep, $700. And I said, what? what? Yeah. And that's with insurance and copays. No, it was a clerical error. But I know well enough to ask, hang on, you've made a mistake. But for the person who's newly diagnosed and in their early 20s or yeah. whatever, who is maybe from a background where we're a little hesitant to go into these places in the first place, mm -hmm. someone goes $700, what do you do? Well, I mean, that actually is something that happened to me recently um, and when I was trying to access mental health services. And it was this whole thing where, yeah, I'm at this place where I can jump into the advocate seat and I can be like, no, like I can get a courtesy visit. You should know that I, you can go with somebody that's billed under that. But it's this whole thing where it's like, why do I have to do that? Why can't I come in and just be a person and a client? Why do I have to now jump into this educator and this advocate role and all these other things when I just came in to be a patient? Like, it's so unfair. I came mm -hmm. in to be taken care of. Yeah. Chris, is it a symptom of our overall healthcare system? Oh, absolutely. And uh, so many people are afraid of the healthcare system, which is really important to have those advocates, though, to understand how it works and plug the people into it so that they know, one, 
that they're confident in what they're saying, what they should be asking, what they're looking for, and the programs that are available to them so that the cost is extremely lower than what it, what it really is. Big pharma companies, let's say Gilead, Viv, they have patient assistance programs that come in and pay for the cost. If you, they do not have insurance, they'll cover the full cost. If they do have insurance, they'll do copay assistance. People don't know about this though, unless they have an advocate or unless they're dealing with a very specialized HIV uh, pharmacy. So if the people are in the pharmacy don't know about this, they're not gonna be connecting the people to these programs, so they're left with this enormous cost when they really don't need to be paying it at all. Yeah, and, and again, you, you picture yourself being a young, terrified, you've just been given this news, and now you have to jump through 27 hoops and all this mm -hmm. red tape to get something that the drug company, and they will, you're absolutely right, yeah. Gilead, Viv, they will give you the medicine for free, and we're, part, I'm so glad we're doing this program right. to tell you that. Mm -hmm. There's about eight big pharmaceutical companies that actually have this, and the other part, as far as jumping through hoops is applying for it. Yes. The application process oh that we're not talking about, we haven't talked about yet. Yeah, too, that so. is true. Dr. Anu, what's the human cost? I mean, the, what's, you know, the high cost has a human cost. What is it? It's just unfortunate. I think this is where we get dropouts, right? As mm -hmm. far as uh, going through the process, being diagnosed, and then not following through. And then on the other side is not following through, having HIV then turn into AIDS, mm -hmm. um, and then having to be seen in an ER. Mm -hmm. And then the costs as far as hospital admissions, yeah. et cetera, mm -hmm. which is very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's even harder is that, like I can say, because I've been, I've been in and out of care at least, I mean, I've been diagnosed with HIV for like six years. I've been in and out of care at least three times, you know? And Sorry, it's like when you say time. in and out of care, what do you mean? In and out as in having access to meds? Um, all of it. So whether it was having access to meds, whether it was going and seeing my doctor, like all of that. You know, I've had periods where I fell out of it and it becomes this whole thing where it's like, yeah, even I, I know exactly what to do and where to go and who to talk to, but it's so exhausting and it gets to a place where it's not even about me not wanting to live. It's just like, that's just too much. I can't yeah. right now. And it's like, it's literally just like, you, you can't, you just- Yeah, life. but Thomas, if you know that the this is saving your life, mm -hmm. why would you drop out? And is that common, Dr. Arnold? I mean, there's, I mean, when we, if you look at what, like, uh, they call the HIV continuum of care, you can see the huge drop off in, like, people when mm -hmm. they go to their first doctor's visit and when they finally get meds, because it's, it's, it's this thing where it's, like, my, my emotional and mental health is honestly more important, and if this is giving me stress, if I'm going in and feeling like I'm not welcome mm -hmm. with the frontline staff, or if I have to, like, argue with the nurse or the doctor or anybody like that, I'm just, like, my time needs to be spent elsewhere, because I, I have very little energy that yeah, I can but you're expand. Not, but you're not going to have time to spend elsewhere because this is the shit that keeps mm -hmm. you alive. Yeah. How common mm -hmm. is this? It's, I think it's pretty common. Yeah. But we're, not talk we're also talking about what type of facility you're going mm -hmm. to. Yes. So there's, yes, you can go and see your general practitioner, but they're not going to have necessarily the HIV specific resources yeah. or an advocate that's that's there in the office. I think it makes a huge difference when you're going to an HIV clinic that yeah. has mm -hmm. everybody that's oriented to that specific right. diagnosis, right? So if you came to me in my office, I'm limited as far as the resources that I have. It's gonna take me a little bit longer to hook you up, and then there's gonna be a lag. In those two to three uh, days of being like, well, my office will happen. contact you, there's where a drop-off happens But what do we too. do, but there's a huge stigma, we know this, there's yes. a huge stigma around HIV. So if you're saying go to the HIV clinic, well, that's one of the biggest obstacles in the first mm -hmm. place, exactly. isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, it is. Um, so this is why it's important, I think, for, there's three pillars to what we do in adaptive resources. One is education. We go out and talk to hospitals, nursing programs, high schools, and college campuses about HIV today and stigma today. Um, so that's very important, reaching out to people that, and especially practitioners, people that are involved in this every day but don't really know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that needs to change so that 
patients will trust their doctors and the doctors won't treat them as if they are lepers, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, the second thing is healthcare navigation. If you have someone who's knowledge in getting you into a network of doctors and care that will genuinely look after you and treat you not like a number, but treat you like a patient and a person, that gives their trust to that doctor and that makes them want to continue. The third thing is the benefits. And California is on the cutting edge of benefits. So but, for- But that doesn't help the person who's watching this right now in Vietnam. I know, I completely understand. And it's, it's gonna be a slow process to really evolve the way that we handle healthcare, unfortunately. Slow, we've had 30 years of dealing with this. <laughs> yeah, but it's only within the last 15 years that we're really treated with medication that helps us, that's not killing us at the yeah. same time. So is this new pill, the bill that's just been passed in California by Governor Newsom that now you don't need a prescription for PrEP, PrEP. right? Yeah. Which, you know, we talk about um, treatment as prevention and that is what PrEP is considered. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will help change things? I yes, I absolutely. I definitely think so. It's just like plan B. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's like exactly. less barriers. I mean, there's still the cost thing that comes up, but it's like you don't have to worry about having to go through a doctor and convincing them to prescribe you if it's yeah. something they're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it definitely takes out a lot. I always wonder about this, too, because with PrEP, you do need to get certain things monitored, right? Yes. You need to get your kidney function monitored. Yep. So and I don't know how they're going to... Yeah. And STIs. Yeah. And STIs. Yeah. And that's a whole other show we've right. got coming right. up. Right. Back yeah. and STIs. <laughs> I so promise. I don't know how we're going to navigate through this. Right. Yes, I do think it's a good idea, but at the same time, how, what's, how are we going to manage... So, guys, the, guys, we're running out of time. Oh, I don't sorry. mean to cut you off. I just want to talk part. about Teladoc because that answers All right, your question. tell us about Teladoc. Okay, so a lot of organizations are now moving forward with Teladoc systems and having prescriptions done through deliveries that where the uh, the phlebotomist is on the van, so the they that makes so much yes. sense. The so they're your blood. thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. No, that's all right. I, hear, I thought jargon. it had something to do with flowers. Um, so they are working on getting the nurses and the phlebotomist to the patient without the patient having to go to the doctor. That's they get the so blood smart. work to the doctor. They give all the results, and it gives them instant access. So on that second delivery, they're getting their blood taken. So that by the time the third delivery happens, they have they're all ready to go. Them and they're just gonna continue getting this. This is both for HIV and for um, uh, PrEP That people. is brilliant, and you know what, I'm just grumpy that we've run out of time on this one. Sorry. But the good news is that we do an after talk, so I wanna say thank you, Dr. Anu, thank you, Thomas, thank you, Chris, all for being here, and My thank pleasure. you also. So, if you wanna find out anything more about what we've discussed, give Chris a call. Um, okay. Or go to our website at pluslifemedia.com. We'll have a lot more information about what we've covered in today's Plus Talk. And remember to follow us across social media platforms. We are at Plus Life Media. I'm going to throw these away now because I don't need them. And Ooh. we are going to continue the conversation a little bit more and that content will be up shortly. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. See you next time. Uh -huh.